Hey everyone, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. In this video, I'll be going through my board game shelf of shame. What is that, you might ask? That's all the board games that I've purchased that I have not played yet. As I go through them, leave a comment below for any that you'd like to see me play next and talk about on my channel. Let's start with a game called Raw. Raw is a card game. I don't really know much about it. It's got a cool Egyptian theme to it. Nice little artwork there. After that, I've got Fields of Arl. And this is a big box game from Uwe Rosenberg. He made Agricola and Caverna. He's famous for making a lot of the farming games. And this one is one to two players only. Uh, it looks like a pretty big farming game. Oh, 60 minutes per player. Next up, Russian Railroads. This is a worker placement game, very highly rated, uh, about building railroads in Russia, I think. Construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway. Next is Teeny Epic Quest. This game is an entire game in this little bitty box here. I've played some of the other Teeny Epic series games. I've played Galaxies and Defenders, and they were both really fun. I've got Teeny, Teeny Epic Quest and Teeny Epic Western. I, I want to give both of these guys a shot. I, I really enjoyed the first two that I played. El Dorado was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres in 2017. It did not win, but just getting the nomination is a pretty prestigious award. It's about some sort of an expedition in South America. Uh, I really like the artwork on this. Next, I've got a game called Point Salad. Point Salad is a term where you've got those board games that have a million different ways to score points. They call that a Point Salad. So someone created a card game that's literally called Point Salad, the bunch of vegetable cards. Imperial Settlers is another game that's pretty highly rated. Got a bunch of awards here on the box. Uh, let's see, you're settling the Romans, Barbarians, Egyptian, and Japanese, and they're settling and expanding. Tai Chu is a trick-taking card game uh, that was recommended by one of my viewers. I just haven't had a chance to play it yet. We really like trick-taking card games around here. In fact, Wizard is one of our favorites. Brew Crafters is about brewing beer. It's worker placement, and you're gathering resources, and then brewing beer and selling it, trying to become the best brewer. I've read about it. This game sounds really fun, and uh, I'm excited to try this one. Oh My Goods. This is a little card game. The cards on it have got a, it's like a multi-use card game with a bunch of different ways the cards are used which I think that's kind of a cool mechanism in a game. Next up is Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico is one of the classics in the board game uh, world. I've actually not played it. I'm a little embarrassed to say that. Uh, this is one I should have played. It came out in 2002. It was one of the earlier games introduced what's called an action selection mechanism where you have a, a, a set of cards and you choose what action you're gonna play on your turn. And then you do that. That's about all I know about it and I've heard really good things about it. Next up is Karuba. Karuba was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres in 2016. It's a little tile laying game where you're trying to work your way from one thing to another. I've played the card game, but I've not actually played the full board game. Next up, a little card game called Cabo, which I really don't know much about it. Uh, I heard about it on a podcast and I'm excited to try it. It's a little two to four player, 45 minute card game. I have Ice Cool 1, it's a lot of fun. This one can apparently be combined to create uh, a game that goes up to eight players where you're, you're flicking penguins. This is a dexterity game. Ice Cool 1 is a lot of fun and I, I really need to try this one. I don't know why I haven't busted this one out yet. Smash Up is a game I bought years ago. I was actually getting my blood drawn one time, or I was giving blood. There was like the blood, the blood drive thing outside of the office and I was talking to the guy drawing my blood and he's like, oh, you like board games? You should try Smash Up. This game is heavy. It's called On Mars. This one came out this year in 2020. It's about settling Mars. I love the space themed games. I love terraforming Mars. It's my favorite game. I also like Space Base a lot and I'm excited to give On Mars a shot. Anachrony. This is a pretty heavy game also. Chariot Race is a game I backed on Kickstarter years ago by Matt Leacock, the same guy who made Pandemic, and you're racing chariots. Dead of Winter is a zombie apocalypse game where it's semi-cooperative from what I understand, and you're fighting off these zombies. It sounds fun, and from everything I've heard, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Ticket to Ride Europe. 
I've played Ticket to Ride in the US a ton of times. I don't know why I've never tried the Europe one. I've heard really good things about it. I've also got the 1912 expansion with it. Ethnos. I don't really know much about this game either. I just saw it on a YouTube channel somewhere and it sounded cool. It's also one of the games that goes up to six players. I'm always looking for good games that go up to six players. So yeah, Ethnos. Not Alone. Not Alone has some of the coolest artwork I've seen in a while. Check that out. It's an asymmetrical party game where one person plays as this big monster and everyone else is running away from the monster. I've heard good things about Not Alone. It goes up to seven players. We're always looking for games that play with a lot of players. Gizmos is a Phil Walker Harding game. And Phil Walker Harding made some other games like Sushi Go, uh, Imhotep. I really like his board games. They're very simple to learn, but they've got a lot of depth to them. Bora Bora. This has just got some really cool artwork on it. And these little huts, the, the triangular huts on the back are little wooden meeples. Um, it looks like a really pretty game. I've heard good things about it as well. All right, I gotta stop saying that. I've heard good things about all these games. Obviously, that's why I bought them. So I'm gonna try and not say that anymore. Trogdor the board game. I've heard good things about this one. Just kidding. Uh, this one I backed on Kickstarter. I used to watch Trogdor. Uh, if you haven't seen Homestar Runner, then you probably don't even know what this is. This is Trogdor the Burninator, and there's a board game about him. Filler is a little card game, a bakery card game with pastries. Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. This is Roll and Write. I really love the original Castles of Burgundy. I want to try this Roll and Write game. Ironclad Mercenary Battleship. This is a game I backed on Kickstarter several years ago. It's one to three players cooperative campaign based where you're on this mission. And I just love this artwork. It's like a very... 80s, 90s style, almost like Wing Commander type artwork. Lotus is a card game where you put these cards together to form flowers. That's about all I know about it. The Manhattan Project is a worker placement game about the atomic arms race where you're working to construct a nuclear bomb. Jump Drive, this is basically Race for the Galaxy Light. It's made by the same people and is meant as an easy way to introduce people to the Race for the Galaxy universe. Instead of having quite so many complicated symbols, I think they've simplified it some, at least that's what I've heard, and makes it easier to teach. Jamaica is a race around the island of Jamaica. That's all I know. Brass Lancashire. This is a highly rated game from 2007. From what I understand, it's a deep economic engine building and route building game. Hit the Road is some sort of game where you're driving down the road in a car. It's got like a very old 50s theme to it. And you're running away from zombies. I think that's why it's the Z there. Hit Z Road. Floor Plan. This game just came out. It's by the same creator of the game Welcome To, which we really enjoy, which is a roll and write game. Cupcake Empire. This is a cute little game with some really nice artwork on it. I believe it's worker placement uh, for a cupcake shop. My daughter loves to bake, so that's kind of the reason I got this game. Silver and Gold. I really don't know much about this. I saw it at Target, and I saw Phil Walker Harding's name on it. As I mentioned, he did Sushi Go. Eldritch Horror. This is a big, big game. It's heavy. My one arm can barely hold it up. I feel like I'm at the strongest man competition. We actually saw that the other day, and they're holding these big logs up. Insane. Spirits of the Forest. This is a game I backed on Kickstarter. It's, it's really pretty with all these cards on it and these little tokens you put on the cards. Exodus, Paris Novois. This is the sequel to The Resistance, sort of. It's made by Indie Board and Card Games. Same ones who did Coup and The Resistance. Targi? Targi? This is a two-player game. Uh, I think it's actually like two-player worker placement and you lay a bunch of cards out. I've heard really good things about this, uh, but I said I wasn't going to say that again. The Crew. I actually bought this game before they announced that it won the Kenner Spiel des Jahres this year, which is the Connoisseur Board Game of the Year. This one sounds really interesting. It's cooperative trick-taking. Fallout, the board game, is based off of the video game Fallout. And last but not least, Kodama the Tree Spirits. 
And this game, you're putting cards together. It looks kind of like that Lotus one, but instead of putting them, arranging them to make flowers, this one you're making these craggly, scraggly, whatever the right word is for that, trees. Those are all the board games on my board game shelf of shame. I didn't even count them as I went through. It's way too many. I gotta start trimming this down. So follow along as I go through these. I'm gonna post videos giving you my initial impression of each game. Leave your comment below though about which game you'd like to see me try out next. Thanks and I'll see you next time. Bye.